Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And we have our first conversation for the day. We'll be focusing on security. Now, pointing to the success recorded in the fight against insurgency in the Northeast, the presidency says the escalation of terrorist activities in the Northwest would also be brought under control soon. Now, the presidency said there was ongoing re-equipment and reorganization of the security and intelligence forces. Now, the North has been reeling on the serious terrorism and bandit attacks, which have taken a turn for the worse. There have been daily attacks, including kidnapping for ransom, insurgency, killings and incessant former herder clashes, among others. Now, just yesterday, the Catholic Bishop of Sokoto Diocese, Machi Kuka, slammed the federal government for allegedly failing to halt the Western security situation. Uh, joining us this morning to look at the security concerns is Professor of Hematology, Osman Yusuf. Good morning to you, Professor Yusuf. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Uh, thank you for having me. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, this growing concern and this increase in security challenges that the nation is having. The Bishop of Sokoto was in the news uh, yesterday, and he's saying that Nigerians no longer recognize where they live anymore. How do you reason all of that? Right, I, I don't comment on what the clergy say. I'll only comment on what I know. Okay, what do you and know always, then? Hello? What do you know then? What do I know about insecurity? Yes, you say you only comment on what you know. So what is it that, that you know? Why are we in this particular quagmire? Right, I mean, I, I know about banditry. That is what I've invested my time on over the last two years of my life. All right. I am... I and Dr. Sheikh Ahmed Gumi, we have been to uh, the forest in eight states in the north, five in the north, northwest and three in the north central, meeting with these war commanders, uh, meeting with uh, local uh, community leaders, meeting with traditional rulers, meeting with, with uh, Fulani leaders, meeting with clerics, and meeting with, with vigilantes. Uh, we are meeting with state governors in these states. So this much I know and I'm learning from, but I don't comment on what other clerics say, their opinions. All right, fine. Indeed, uh, indeed, uh, you, you can only comment on the things uh, that you know and the things that uh, you have a perfect knowledge about. Uh, but you wrote something. Let's just uh, try and get some of the things um, out of all that you wrote. Uh, you wrote um, a particular piece on the 7th of April, and uh, you captioned it, the unholy alliance between bandit and ISWAP. Uh, you said it is a national security nightmare. Just the other day, we had reports that um, ISWAP um, has carried out so many attacks in Nigeria uh, so far. Uh, Nigeria is actually uh, the highest, uh, one of the countries with the highest, uh, you know, IS uh, attacks in, in the world. And you're saying there is an alliance between bandits and Israel. Can you throw more light on that? Right. What I was saying is that the bandits we saw, the ragtag bandits we saw when we visited this forest, uh, from day one, we knew they are not the ones responsible for the train attack in, along Kaduna Abuja. And all along, for the past two years, Sheikh Kume used to urgently, with a sense of urgency, uh, tell me that, man, we need to get to this bad list before this Boko Haram and Ishwab get to now. With their twisted uh, religious ideology. Because these bandits do not have that. Most of the, almost all the problems we hear, the grievances we hear from these bandits are grievances that are local. And the solutions can be found locally. Nowhere in the forest we visited did they have any grievances against the federal government or the military. But here you are, any alliance between Iswa or Boko Haram and, and uh, these bandits is going to be a lethal combination for this country that will be very, very difficult for any security agency. <laughs> And the reasons are clear. The reason is because over the last 13 years that Boko Haram has been wreaking havoc in this country, long before they picked up arms, they have been wanting access into the Northwest, which is the largest population geopolitical zone in this country. 
And the reason they haven't gotten access all this time is not for lack of trying. Neither is it accidental. But it was because of proactive, behind the scenes, tireless efforts of our traditional rulers and clerics in this region, preaching to the Muslim faithfuls in this region that they should not accept these twisted religious ideologies that Boko Haram are bringing. And that's why you don't see it. You remember they nearly killed the late Amy Adobayaro Kano because of all these efforts. Well, now they are trying to get this access and the train attack in, along this Kaduna Abuja, there was clear, clear indication that they are beginning to work together. And the pointers are there from the outset. Number one, these are ragtag bandits do not have the capability for using bombs. This is Boko Haram and Iswa. Because currently, as we speak, Nigerians do not know. But the capital of Borno State, Medjugorje, has been without electricity for 14, 15 months. Why? Because Boko Haram, Iswa, they blew up the transmission lights into the state capital twice. So they had precedents for doing for hitting infrastructure, number one. Number two, when the captives were taken out of the train, they were conveyed in buses. Bandits do not use buses. They know the terrain. That's where they live. That's where they live. And when this, these terrorists enter the train carriage, they were shouting religious incantations. That is not bandit. That is not bandits. And when they came out on the video, when they released the first person, they were saying the federal government know what to be want. Bandits have no business with the federal government. They don't say federal government know what we want. Their problems are local. So all these were clear signs from the outset that this is the work of Boko Haram, Iswak, or any of the others, Ansaru or Dar es Salaam. And lo and behold, intelligence reports that are coming up is clearly showing that, yes, there is a connection between one of these four and, 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 and bandits. All right, Professor, if I, have to, if I have to burst in, if I have to just uh, get a bit of clarity from all that you have said, uh, using the Cardona train attack as a, as a case in point, what are you saying right now? Is it that um, these attacks were actually perpetrated by ESWAP and not necessarily the bandits? No, uh, ESWAP with some collaboration with the bandits that know the terrain. Because Iswap and all its other cousins, Boko Haram, Ansaru, or Darul Salam, cannot have access to that place without, without the acceptance of, of these bandits. Remember, these bandits do not have a unified control. They are all over the place. So it may be just one of the lead bandits in that area that align with this, with this kindred spirit terrorist to perpetrate this act. And this is worrying. This should worry this nation more than before. We're in deeper trouble than we were. They have literally quarantined Kaduna, the city of Kaduna, which serves this highway and this rail route, serves nine northern states and the Republic of Niger into Abuja. So they have located that. Remember a few weeks ago, they attempted breaching Kaduna Airport. So their target is infrastructure. Now they, are, they have targeted successfully transport infrastructure, the railroad, the highway, and then the airline. Yeah. So we are in deep, deep trouble. And I hope the federal government and security agencies wake up and realize the trouble we are in. We need to find a way to flush and, 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 and frustrate this marriage between ISWAP and whoever the head of this bandit is. That is the goal. But the primary goal of the federal government and security agencies now is to get our people out safely. And for the federal government, for goodness sake, to speak for the families of these victims. No arm of the federal government has spoken with the families of these victims, which is, which is unfortunate and unacceptable. There was a video clip going around of, 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 of one of the relatives of of these victims 
lamenting that no arm of the federal government has spoken with the, with the victims. This is not acceptable. These people were abducted in a vehicle that's a federal government vehicle, said to be protected by the federal government. And this accident happened. So the federal government needs to speak with the nation, needs to speak with the relatives, and get our people out safely. Uh, uh, Professor, Professor Usman Yusuf, uh, it sounds like you understand the modus operandi of the bandits and you understand how they operate and their concerns. And because looking at some of this article that you've put out, uh, it talks about the operation of uh, Boko Haram, ISWAP, and how they have actually gone about their activities uh, targeting government infrastructure and facilities, among others. But that's not necessarily the issue of the bandits. But constantly, we have had reports of this bandit. And we have a lot to grapple with, which is a major security concern. The bandits cannot be left out of the situation. We have cases where you have bandits going to villages, you know, killing people randomly and otherwise. I mean, just acting uh, out of the law. We understand that uh, within the space that we operate, the law protects and provides for every concern and every grievance that uh, you know a person or a group of persons might probably have. So, uh, w what is this about the bandit? What's really go who are these bandits, and what exactly are they uh, agitating for, and why are they taking the laws into their hands by killing people? <laughs> This is question you should ask one of this question you should ask one of these bandits when you get him on the show. I mean, we have and I've said it several. The Fulanis in the forest who lived in this country, and I'm Fulani, and we're folks in the forest. They have generational, generational grievance that these bandits are now taken as a shield for their criminalities. When we go into the forest, Shikumi listens to all of them. When we met them in, in, in Niger, it was a gathering of head of bandits from six days. We would sit on the mat, he would listen to everybody, every one of them. And he would say that when he when he is time it's time for him to speak, he will speak to them in the sternness of voices. We've had your grievances. We are full of you are full of we have had your grievances, but this is no reason for you to be doing what you do. We are here. We've risked our life. We will not leave the forest sometimes till 10 p.m. We will not get to our accommodation till 1 a.m., 2 a.m., putting our lives at risk. No government sent us. No government gave us protection. We are here because we, 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 we realize it is our duty and responsibility. We cannot leave this all to government. But these criminal bandits are taking over the legitimate grievances, legitimate generational grievances of Fulani herders, and they are using it as shield for their for their criminality. So, so uh, let's get to the let's get to that point uh, where you have talked about the legitimate grievances and the fact that um, Sheikh Gumi has actually listened. To, you have been part of it, and I mean, it means you've had an interface with these bandits. And so, what exactly are they asking for? What are their grievances? Yeah. What are their concerns? Yeah, let, let me, let, yeah, let me give you an example. The one example, I'll give you an example that will that you relate to during answers. Those kids that went back in Lagos and burning the food plate. It didn't start just by one, one, one incident. There have been grievances that the elders and leaders were not listening to. The Ogoni pollution of their land. Nobody listened to them until things went crazy. So also, this Fulani legitimate. Nobody is holding forth for these bandits. Legitimate Fulani herders have had grievances for years. We that live in this part of the world know that. So what are the they grievances have, of this bad I'm listening. I'm getting to that. Okay. I'm getting to that. And these are no reasons for what, for what these bandits are doing. These are simple. This, this, this set of people in the forest have never seen anything government since the creation of this country. No light, no electricity, no schools, no roads, no nothing. And there have been local, local injustices. 
between the Fulani herders and the local judiciary, the local traditional rulers. These are local issues that you and, and I would look and say they are stupid. But believe you or me, if your house girl or your security man is not happy with him, with you, don't wave them away. Listen to them. This is a country that we do not listen to grievances of people until they pick up arms. They were governing, they started listening to them when they picked up arms. Right? So, so you, you were saying that these bandits are causing havoc, taking lives, killing people because they don't have, uh, they haven't felt the presence of government in terms of provision of basic amenities that uh, some parts of the country, I mean, almost all parts of the country are faced with. I, 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 so, so that's what you, I, I want to find out if that's what you're saying. On the other hand, no, if that's anything to go to by. Legitimate Fulani herders make over 99.999% of people, of, of people in the forest that have lived peacefully all across this country have had legitimate generational grievances that these bandits are now using for their criminality. That is no justification for what they are doing. Nobody will tell you that. Nobody will justify what they are doing based on their grievances. And their grievances could be solved locally. So, but so, every criminal will pick something to justify his criminality. Every criminal. So everybody has grievances. We should listen to everybody's grievances. We should not listen to them before they pick up arms. God help us is if the over 10 million out of school children all over this country pick up arms. Professor. All the millions of youth that are unemployed pick up arms. Government must listen, must listen to the people. That's why we elected them. Nobody is given any justification. We went in to listen because there is absence of government empathy all over this country. No, Professor. Were, go ahead. Yes. So I, I understand the point that you have actually made, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to really, you know, establish it. And the point is that uh, several grievances and a lot of peace, uh, persons are really displeased with, uh, you know, governance and the issue of government. And so uh, in terms of not feeling the existence of government, some persons have decided that uh, some criminal element have decided to take advantage of this and they are community committing crime and uh, taking the laws into their hands. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Okay. Everybody has grievances, but people pick up arms, we're in trouble. I mean, this is almost uh, the... F okay, maybe I'll just let that slide. It sounds really strange. No, don't, don't let it slide. Let's go. I'm ready. That's why I'm here. I mean, so it, it's really almost strange to hear that these are the concerns. But let's also talk about the entity that we live in. Do you also know that we are in a situation, we're in an era where the, because all of this consent and fight is about the resources of the country, who gets what, when and how. And so we have definitely the principle of derivation, the 13%, the allocation. Oil has become a very big deal for us as a country. And so states of the Federation, stakeholders, persons among this are really concerned about who gets what when comes out of all of this. I mean, we're talking about the oil uh, earnings that comes out of this. Now, but do you also know that there are regions in this country who are responsible for the earnings of this country? But if you go back, you know, to these communities, there's really nothing to write them about in terms of development. So it feels like they're the golden hen that lays the egg, but they're not being taken care of. I really do not know what justification um, it is. And I would also like to ask, does this bandit, do they belong to a constituency? Are they in a local government? Right. You see, I, I don't know your name. My name is uh, Messi. My name is Messi. What's your name? Mercy. Mercy. Yes, please. Mercy. I'm not here justifying anything or speaking for 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 any bandit or, or anybody. Let me tell you, we're talking of a regional 13% wherever. Well, who was the president that listened to the grievances of people of the Niger Delta? It wasn't Jonathan, it wasn't Obasanjo, it wasn't IBB, it wasn't Abacha. 
It was President Umar Eredo from Kassana State where I come from. Because he listened, he saw the injustice. True? Created the Ministry of Niger Delta, an NDDC. Well, guess what NDDC has become? NDDC, billions of, of dollars are pumped into that place, administered by people of the region. What has it become? It has become an ATM of the people. This is not what uh, Kensaro we were died for. But the people that are handed over this thing to take care of their people, the grievances of the people, look what they have done with NDDC. Pillage that place. So let no one tell me 13%, 14%, you can give 100% to all of these governors, nothing trickles down to the people. Problems are local. But is that enough reason to take the laws into the hands? No, there's no, nobody is justifying anything. You're asking me as if I'm holding forth for anybody. But all I'm saying, all the state governors are not doing the right thing. 60, 70, 80 percent of the problems we are blaming the president, we are blaming the president, are the responsibility of the governors. The governors are not building roads, they are not building hospitals, they are not building boreholes. What is their idea of development? Building flyovers and, 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 and tarmacs in the town. They are not investing in people like leaders of our time invested in us. That's why I'm able to be in this studio and educate the world. There is irresponsible governance all across 36 states. Nothing to do with 13% derivation. You can give 100% derivation to the oil producing states. What, happened, what is happening in NDDC will continue to happen. So it's irresponsible governance all across. All right, Professor. So two main right. reasons. Two main reasons for insecurity all across this country are two. Corruption and bad governance. All right, fine. You have Corruption. underlined everything. You've captioned Go everything. Ahead. You've captioned everything into corruption and um, bad governance. Bad governance. Yes. In as much as uh, you know, you know, we, you are not trying to hold brief, and you have said that um, all of this are uh, just crept up as a result of um, the grievances, green concerns that have been there over the years, and that some of them just had to, you know, fall prey and uh, you know, pick up, uh, picked up arms and all of that. But the question right now would be. These issues are there, the bandits are there, and you have raised concerns uh, with um, some sort of an alliance with um, ISWAP, that's um, the Islamic State of West African province. You know, some governor has come out to say that um, they know where these bandits are, they know where they stay, and um, there have been some line of communication. My, my question right now would be, if we know where the bandits are, if we know that um, they are in this particular first, why have we not been able to root them out and um, maybe try to reform them or maybe try to reintegrate them or something so that um, this issue of uh, you know, uh, incessant killings would actually be brought to some sort of an end? Right. I mean, so my purpose when I go on TV is to educate the world. We know where Boko Haram has been. We know the forest where IPOB and their ESN are. We have known where Niger Delta militants have been. We know where all these cults in the Southwest are. There's not knowing where they are, that's not enough. What we have done, and I can speak for us and ourselves, what we have realized all across this country is that elders have lost control of their youth. That is why Kanuri youth become Boko Haram. That is why our Fulani youth are now bandits. That is why Igbo youth that did not see the civil war are now ESN and IPOP and want to burn this country down. That's what we saw during NSA's insurrection in Lagos when they were burning buses and ransacking the palace of the Oba of Lagos. There was not a single Yoruba elder that could call them to order. What we have done is our civic responsibility as elders in this part of the country and getting involved. Instead of sitting down and blaming government, we put our lives at risk, not at the behest of any government. We went in to eight states, and we have 28 more states to go because there are Fulanis all across this country. Our goal was peace and preaching peaceful coexistence between host communities. If all elders in all geopolitical zones get involved in their local conflicts, 
we will not be where we are. So when a Kanuri man uh, 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 criticizes us, I say, yeah, get involved in, 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 in Boko Haram issues. When an Igbo man criticizes us, I say, get involved in IPO. When a Yoruba man criticizes our, our call to all elders in this country is to get involved in their local issues, not remain in Abuja and be talking about Igbo presidency, Yoruba presidency, Hausa presidency, rotation, uh, consensus, zoning, whereas our people are back home are burning. Our goal is to get involved, and we are getting involved. We're putting our lives at risk for our to deal with our local issues. And I, I encourage everybody to do the same, rather than looking at the other side and editorializing each of the six geopolitical zones some fire. No, so, um, this country is going Professor Usman, through insecurity uh, that we've never seen in our lifetime. Professor yeah. Usman Yusuf, you, you have been part of the advocacy um, plan for peace. Uh, like you have rightly mentioned, you visited these bandits, you have visited, we, because we can't take out of the picture the fact that these bandits are taking the laws into their hands. They're killing people, uh, they're attacking government facilities. You have also tried to mention that it is not their modus operandi, but at most points, there are several verifications that have stated that they are responsible you know, for some of these attacks that we have experienced over time. And so um, we, we, with all of this really, how effective has this peace process been? Because on the daily, I mean, just recently we had the Kadun, the Plateau State attack that has been on top of the conversation for days now and as we speak. So um, I, I think that we, we have actually lost connection with uh, Professor Usman, uh, Usman Yusuf, as Usman. soon as we were able to connect with him, we'll definitely bring him back. But it's been a very sensitive conversation right now. Very, here. very sensitive. So we live as a country, Nigeria. For me, I think that the issue of having some unity of purpose and speaking as a country were far, 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 far fetched from all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of disparity that goes on. I, I don't really think, if you look at the policy direction, if you look at development across the entire country, we have not spoken in a voice because we constantly see ourselves as units and components and individuals. And so uh, you would be more concerned about the Southwest being developed and not even concerned about the fact that if you have development in the South, South, the Southeast, and you know the North and the Northwest and what have you, then it means development for the entire country. Mm -hmm. And for Lagos, let's take an instance. You have the major consent for Lagos is overpopulation. The fact that uh, Lagos is overpopulated, this congestion. What is that? It shows the urban rural drifts across the 36 states of the Federation, minus the FC, I mean, I was going to say the FCT, but of course, minus Lagos State, because everyone wants to come here. And that's why, why is that? Because lots of things are working here. And that's it. So why don't we have a system where you have devaluation? You have this is negotiation, whether they have to be constitutional or they have to be some form of gentleman agreement. But looking at the arguments that he's put out, uh, he said that he's not been holding brief for this bandit to some extent. Uh, I don't know how true that has been because it feels like you're saying these bandits are not attacking government facilities. That's not your modes of operandi. It is totally that of the East Warp and that of Boko Haram. But however, what are their concerns? They're saying that they're not satisfied. They haven't felt government development. They haven't felt government presence over time. They don't have access to infrastructure or basic amenities. Now let's look at the entire country. Do we all have access to basic inf infrastructure and facility? Do we feel government? Does, how many local government do we have against 774? Everyone, are we feeling the presence of government across? Should we all take up arms and kill ourselves? No Who are we killing? No so the fact that I kill you, does that solve the problem? That. There's no justification to want to take anybody's life. And in as much as he has come out to say that um, we have ungoverned territories, uh, like you have rightly put it, you know, succinctly, you know, 774 local government. We have local government uh, that have not really been reached, that have not even had electrification for a very long time. But um, you know, the people there, they are still hopeful that one day, you know, these uh, you know uh, amenities would come to them. They have not taken up arms. He also said some things uh, which uh, which I, I would actually want to talk more about. Um, that uh, one of the things that drive the young people to uh, all sort of. Um, youthful exuberant, uh, you know, crime and other vices, uh, corruption, 
bad governance. We know that uh, we are blessed with a whole lot of resources, uh, but over time, over the years, uh, these resources, you know, have actually just filtered around uh, just um, a privileged few. You know, our commonwealth, you know, have been hijacked uh, by corrupt leaders and. Uh, over time, they come out to campaign and make promises uh, to Nigerians that uh, if you, you vote us in, uh, would change, uh, you know, the status quo, would change um, your plight. But when they get there, then before you know it, mercy, they have looted all of our commonwealths. No, so um, I, we're hoping that we we have him join the conversation. It's it's quite sad and it's really unfortunate where we are as a people and as a country with all of that's going on because you have different parts, agitations, and the killings. So you want to ask that uh, the cause, if he's saying that the bandits uh, are not about this particular lifestyle, are mm -hmm. these attacks directed towards these individuals, are they directed towards the governors and the government and those calling the shots and implementing, and or are they hem over affairs of policy formulation, policy implementation, the entire policy cycle, are they really, mm. these are tax. Because you're killing people randomly. You have, uh, when people go into communities and just kill people for no reason, just randomly take kill people, their own hands. take lives, all the sort of crime and criminality is going on. We as a government and we as a people, we are in the know, we know where these people are. And then we you haven't moved into, we haven't uh, the, swinged uh, the into the action. The governor was in the news and he said arrested. that they know this bandit and know where they are. We understand that we have uh, Professor uh, Usman Yusuf back on the line. Uh, Prof, thanks for staying with us still. But, but, but let's move away quickly from this because we, I mean, for the want of time, in no time we're going to be moving away. There's been an advocation or advocacy, if you want to put. Uh, you have the reps calling that Nigerians should begin to bear arms for the fact that people need to begin to defend themselves because of the fact that insecurity is becoming, uh, you know, the issue of the front burner. And do, do you think that... Um, these should actually be the way. Does this solve the problem of insecurity? Should Nigerians begin to take arms and defend themselves? No, that would be crazy. That would be a recipe for anarchy. So these politicians, they remain in Abuja and keep yelling and screaming and lamenting in their chambers. How many of these politicians go back home? to hear the, their people. They should be the ones going into the forest to listen to people. Listen the to forest people. in Sambisa, the forest to see bandits, the forest to see Ayakov and ESN. But they're all in Abuja. So there's failure of governance all through, from the executive to the legislature. That's why we got him. I and Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Gumi, we are doctors. Sheikh Gumi is a cleric. We drop all we are doing to join this because it is our duty, our responsibility to join in issues relating to our people. If a government is doing it right, we will have no business doing that. So, uh, members of House of Reps or Senators screaming, uh, let's arm ourselves, da, 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 da. they need to do the right thing. They have been the ones appropriating money to security agencies. They have been the ones to checkmate this government. Have they done their job? How often do they go back home and listen to their people? That's why they are elected. So, corruption and bad governance is what is bringing this, this issue. And, and I've told all these politicians, all they're interested now is they are scrambling for office for 2023. Oh, consensus, zoning, da, 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 da. when our real issue, the land is drenched with blood. So, Professor, what would you suggest? What would you suggest? Let me, what would you suggest, really? What would, you, what would you suggest, uh, really? You have said um, that the members of the House of Representatives and the Senators, uh, they don't really even understand what is even going on in their they don't. constituency. They, don't. they should be the ones that uh, headed towards um, the forest to root out or to even talk to this bandit. But what do you really suggest right now? Every day we wake up to news of um, killings, uh, news of um, yeah. kidnapping. Um, Nigerians mostly don't even sleep with both eyes closed. What do you suggest? Yeah. If we don't, uh, if we're not allowed to uh, bear firearms, uh, how do we pro um, begin to protect ourselves when uh, you said the government has seemingly failed us as a people? How do we secure ourselves? How do we make sure that uh, we can live? Because it's the only the living that can actually hope for tomorrow. Now, and, and right. just to add to that, you know, you've also talked about that it's a recipe for disaster. 
the fact that if people will have to bear arms, don't you think it's a good recipe? Because constantly you can't make an excuse. How do you explain the fact that people are being killed on a daily basis? And you have mentioned that the government has failed. Maybe we get to a point where these people can defend themselves against whether they are ESWAP, whether they are Boko Haram, or whether they are bandits. Now, these persons who are the group of persons or individual who are channeling their grievances and whatever it is, are they channeling it to the right direction? Why are they taking innocent lives? Persons that have no concern with all of this. Does it even make yeah. sense? So maybe we should get to yeah. a point where we all bear arms so we can defend ourselves and it gets very bloody. Good. Well, Mercy, I've lived in the United States longer than I've lived here. The Second Amendment of their Constitution is the right to bear arms. And they're still struggling with this, a problem. You have people going into school, school children, going into school and mowing down their classmates. Every day there's mass shooting in the United States. That is a place where there's control. Here, things are out of control. It means there is... Recently, I was reading the report of the Auditor General of the Federation 2019. Over, seven, over 17,000, close to 18,000 rifles and ammunition are missing from police armory. Uh, they are certainly not somewhere hiding. They are sold to criminals. So we need to be careful. Governance, governance, good governance, good governance is what we need. A reduction in corruption. In the United States, I've lived there longer than I've lived here. People carry arms. I used to have my guns. People go post them and kill everybody. Do you want to carry on? Be my guest. Anarchy will loom room in this country. What we need is a government and a people that care. Government that will govern with the milk of humanity. I don't see that all across this land. I had you guys when I was off. I, was, I had you guys listening about Lagos. Lagos is not El Dorado. The poverty in Lagos is more than the poverty anywhere else, in spite of the money going there in spite of the money. The sea of poverty all over in spite of all the billions. Out of school children selling bread. People living on riverine areas. It's all governance and corruption all across this country. There is not a place you pick and make as an example. It's just a matter of degree. The governors have gone bizarre. Building flyovers and tarmacs is what they consider as, 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 as development, instead of investing on people. So it's all over this country, and we will get to a situation where all hell will break loose if we do not take care of governance and, and, and reduce corruption. Reduce corruption. For the amount of money that is coming into labor, should be better than that. For the amount of money that River State is getting, it should be better than that. Okay, Simple. but one but, person, a governor, a governor has the key. He has the key to the treasury. Does whatever he or she likes. So, 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 so um, Professor Yus uh, Usman Yusuf, you you have the fact yeah. that the the reps uh, are advocating personalized. I mean, the personnel should be armed, or uh, citizens should actually arm themselves, and that's it. And you are saying that it would be a horrible experience, but I think that it's better for us to get to that horrible experience where everyone is defending themselves and whatever happens. But um, let's, you know, tilt a little bit. Let's just go back a bit uh, to some of the issues that we have raised. You talked about um, governance and corruption, the fact that you have poor governance and corruption as a major issue. But if you look at the activities of Boko Haram, do you say that they are fighting for the same purpose? Uh, Boko Haram, ISWAP, and bandits, are they fighting for the same cause of um, corruption and bad governance? Is that really no, their no. agenda? No, no, no. What I'm saying is that each of every, every conflict in this country, they are different. The genesis are different, the solutions are different, the habitat they, they, they live in, different. Boko Haram is different from banditry. Boko Haram banditry is different from the grievances of IPOP, BSN, or cultists, or armed robbers, or, 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 or the pirates you see in the South South. Unless you understand and get involved, you cannot bring one template and expect it to work. 
I don't know anything about IPOP or ESN, and I cannot editorialize about that. Or oh, what who was doing in, in, in the Southwest, or oh, cultures. People locally must understand the, the, the genesis of the problems locally and come in, not remain in studio or writing in newspapers or, or on social media or in Abuja about other people's issues when there are issues all across this country that I recommend everybody must get involved locally. We're getting involved in ours. We're risking our lives. We'll continue to do that because it is our duty and our responsibility as citizens. This country has given my generation more than we've given back. And this is the way we've given back. We right. want peace. All right. And everybody can get more. All right, I must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Professor Usman Yusuf, a professor of hematology, uh, for joining us to look at all of um, the national security concerns we have, uh, the growing uh, uh, concern between um, Bandit, Iswap, and Boko Haram, and uh, some of the insight that you have shared on the show this morning. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right, uh, so we'll leave it at that, uh, you know, Firearms, uh, it is actually a debate uh, should Nigerians uh, bear firearms? Uh, or my opinion, if I have to say, is that uh, over time, there, the issue of um, gun control will still be a big one. We know how it has happened in America, in the UK, in some of the Western countries, uh, how children arbitrarily pick up um, arms and uh, you know, go on a shooting spree. You know, a lot of people um, have died innocently uh, from street bullets, from children killing children. I don't think we want to get to that particular point in our nation's history. Well, that's the size of the show for today, um, except you have something to add. Well, if you miss out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channels at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Many thanks for watching. I am Messi Boko. And I'm Justin Academy. The news comes up on top of the hour at 9 a.m. See you again. <laughs>